APA Style, 7th edition, is produced by the American Psychological Association and is typically used for education, psychology, and the sciences. This short citation video will cover three learning objectives. First, finding the library's APA guide to find citation resources. Second, selecting, locating, and summarizing citation elements and examples with Owl at Purdue. And third, applying citation examples and creating original citations. Learning Objective 1. To access the library's APA LibGuide, visit the library webpage at lib.tamuk.edu. Then, click the Research Help button. Next, scroll down the page and click the link that says Citation Guides. The page lists all the library citation style guides. We will choose the APA 7th Edition Style Guide option. Click the APA Citation Guides 7th Edition link to access the guide. The library provides a lot of different resources to help you cite, including video tutorials, paper templates, websites, and citation style guides. To practice citing our materials, we will click on the APA Style Guides tab. Notice that we have a few different style guides for you to choose from. Owl at Purdue is a well-known resource for determining how to cite and is the one we will use today. I'll go ahead and click on the link to the APA Formatting a Style Guide, Owl at Purdue. When using Owl at Purdue, be sure to check the guide you're referencing is APA 7th edition. If you need access to older editions, the links are also found here. One of the OWL's guide strengths is how it provides citation templates and examples of different citations for books, periodicals, and other sources. Using the page's navigation bar on the left side, you can find examples and templates of different types of citation materials by scrolling down the page and looking for the appropriate reference list link under General Format. Learning Objective 3. Now let's practice. First, let's look at how to cite a book. I will be using the book Reimagining the Academic Library by David Lewis. Using the OWL website, I will click on Reference List Books in the link navigation bar. Scroll down and we'll see the basic format as a template, followed by a completed example. We'll use the format template to create our own citation. Using our template and format, I can see that the first element we need is the author. I read over the book record, and in the author line, I find the author name, David W. Lewis. According to APA style, I'll write it in last name, first initials format, with a period at the end. Using the template, I can see our next element is the year of publication. The date is placed within parentheses, and if applicable in APA, the month is fully written out. If there is no publication date, it's indicated by a lowercase n period d period within the parentheses. And d stands for no date. Using the book record, I consult the imprint line and see our publication date is 2016. I'll add the date element after the author, place it in parentheses, and end it with a period. The next element in the format is the book title. Using the book record again, I find the title line and see the book's title is Reimagining the Academic Library. For APA, this is written in sentence format, so the only letters capitalized are the first letter of the title and subtitle and any proper nouns. Examples are names and places. APA also requires book titles to be italicized. After the title, our publisher information is next. Using the book record, 
we consult the imprint line for a final time and see the publisher is Roman and Littlefield. This is how our final citation should look. Lewis, comma, D period W period, in parentheses 2016 period, in italics, reimagining the academic library period, Roman and Littlefield period. Let's compare our completed citation with the example provided in the OWL. Our authors, dates, book titles, and publisher information are in sync. We're on the right track, and that looks great. Next, we'll practice using an article from a database. I will be using the article, Examining Virtual Reference Services in Academic Libraries. This is a journal article in a periodical with a DOI. Let's go back to the OWL at Purdue. Since I am citing an electronic article, I will click on Reference List Electronic Sources. I need to be sure my resource matches my example. So I'll scroll down the page a bit until I see a section titled Article from an Online Periodical with DOI Assigned. This section has a template for this type of citation and example. We'll use this template to create our own citation. Using the OWL template, I can see that our citation begins with an author. I'll consult the article record and see the author is listed as Brad Vogus. According to the OWL example, our next element is the publication date. We can check the article record to see the month and year indicated. 2020. So we'll include that in our parentheses. The date is often next to the rest of the required publication information, like journal title, volume, issue, and page numbers. The next element in the template is the title of the article. In this case, our article title would be Examining Virtual Reference Services in Academic Libraries. I'll add the title to our citation with appropriate capitalization. The next set of elements is the publication information. Using our template, we will see this is the title of the periodical or journal. After looking at our article page, we can see our periodical title is Public Services Quarterly. The title of the publication will be italicized since it is the parent work and keeps its capital letters. We're not done with the publication information yet, so we'll add a comma after the journal and follow with the volume and issue number, as we can see in our template example. Notice closely that the volume, but not the issue, remains italicized. Using the article record, I can see that the volume and issue numbers are volume 16 and issue 4. In APA, all you need to cite the volume and issue are just their respective numbers. The issue also goes in parentheses. After I've added this to my citation, I'll place another comma. According to our template example, the next element we'll need is the page numbers. According to the article record, 
our page numbers are 1388 and 1396. Similarly to the volume and issue number, we will only put the numbers, and the section ends with a period. Using our template, we'll see that the last section is something called a DOI. Sometimes a DOI is portrayed as either a URL or a set of numbers. To find our DOI, I'll consult the article record page until I find the number. All numbers need to be in a URL format. This is new to the 7th edition. The URLs should begin https forward slash forward slash doi.org forward slash before completing the rest of the DOI. Our citation should read like this, bogus comma b period, followed by the date in parentheses period, the title of the article, examining virtual reference services in academic libraries period, all lowercase. Next is the journal title in italics, followed by a comma and the volume number. In regular font is the issue number in parentheses, followed by a comma, as well as the page numbers, followed by a period, with finally the DOI in its APA style URL. Our citation matches both the template and the given examples very well. Now let's move on to our final citation example and practice a web page. Since I'm citing a web page, I will click on Reference List Electronic Sources. Scroll down a bit and we can see the format template under Web Page or Piece of Online Content. By now, you should start to see a pattern arise when citing APA. Author, Date, Title of Work, publication information, and location information. According to our template example, the first element we need is the author. Carefully looking at our web page, I can see my author is Neely Tucker. I'll write their name in the last name first initials format and end the section with a period. Using our template, I can see the next element we need is the date the web page was published. I look carefully at the web page and see it's dated as January 11th, 2021. As a reminder, APA date format starts with the year, followed by the month spelled out, and then the day. The date is inside parentheses and the element ended with a period. The next element, according to our template, is the title of the web page. The title of this particular page is Free to Use and Reuse, The Art of the Book. In our citation, the web page title is italicized, and the first letter of the title and the first letter after the colon are the only letters to be capitalized. This element also ends with a period. According to our template, the next element is the name of the website. Looking closely at our web page, we can see the title of the website is Library of Congress Blogs. As the name of the website is a proper noun, it gets to keep its capitalization, and its element ended with a period.
Lastly, we need the location information, which is the complete URL of the site. After we add it to our citation, we'll be done with this element. You can either type out the URL or copy-paste it into our citation. Once we add it to our citation, we're done with this element. APA 7th edition doesn't require the use of retrieved from before URLs or DOIs, but the date can be included here for sources where versions can be changed or edited. Now that we have our final citation, let's compare it to our examples. Remember, we learned earlier that web pages can be trickier to cite since they don't always have a complete set of information. Our web page Purdue example matches very closely to our template. We have the author, followed by the date of publication, along with the web page title in italics, followed by the website name, concluding with our URL. Using the OWL reference links, we've created our own citations and compared them to completed examples for accuracy. A completed reference or works cited list will look much like this. Notice that the document is double spaced and that the citations are organized alphabetically by author last name from A to Z. Citations longer than one line also have a hanging indent according to APA style. If you have questions about how to format your citations in APA style, please contact your instructor or a librarian. I hope this short tutorial on the basics of APA style has been helpful. Please consult the APA LibGuide and resources as you complete your assignment and contact your instructor with any questions. Thanks for watching and good luck.